Imagine being able to see into the past, like opening up a portal and watching events unfold as they did years ago or centuries ago, or a millennia or even millions and billions of years into the past. It's something unfathomable on the planetary level, but once you move out into space, that's when time starts to get a little bit weird. For example, if you look into the sun, you're actually seeing eight minutes into the past because that's how long it took for that light to reach you from the surface of the star. Don't actually look into the sun though, you'll go blind. But if you were to relocate yourself to Neptune, then not only would you be able to look at the sun without going blind, you'd also now be seeing light that was four hours in the past. The nearest star to our own is called Proxima Centauri, and there is a planet orbiting it called Proxima b that we believe could be very similar to the Earth. It might even have aliens there. And if those aliens could see the Earth through a bi-gas telescope, then they would see our lives unfold as they did four years ago. All of the madness that happened here since 2017 is completely unknown to even our closest neighbors in the galaxy. But even that is such a tiny distance on the scale of the Milky Way galaxy. If you could see from one end to the other of our cosmic spiral, then you'd be getting a view that dates back between 100 and 200,000 years. But we can go even further to another Earth-like planet called TOI 700D. There might be aliens there as well, a hundred million light years away from us, and if they were to look at the Earth right now through a giant space telescope, then they would only see a jungle planet ruled by dinosaurs. They'd be like, holy shit, look at that one. It's covered in giant monsters. But what if we had our own giant space telescope to look back at them? Would we see alien dinosaurs in their past? What if we look beyond that, deeper into space and time and watched a galaxy from a billion years ago, or even 10 billion years? Because the universe has no known end or limitations. The light from the Big Bang that started this whole thing over 13 billion years ago is still out there somewhere, and we could see it all if we only had a strong enough telescope. And that's why the James Webb Telescope is probably the coolest thing that humans ever have launched into space. It's a terrifyingly complex instrument that cost a spectacular amount of money, and we're about to load it into the nose of a rocket and blast it out beyond the moon. But assuming nothing goes horribly wrong in the process, this telescope is going to start providing us with answers to some of the most mind-bending questions in the universe, and those answers could change everything that we think we know about how our reality came to be. It's going to be a trippy ride, so let's talk about it. This is The Space Race. The James Webb Space Telescope has been a long time in the making, about 25 years. They first started developing this telescope idea in the late 90s with the plan to launch by 2007. That didn't work, and it's probably for the best, because the telescope was completely redesigned in 2007 to what we see now. If it had launched in the original time frame, then there's no way that the telescope would be able to accomplish the feats that we are looking at today. A lot of the reason that this thing is so terrifyingly complex is the sheer size of it. While the current Hubble Space Telescope has a mirror dish of 2.4 meters in diameter, the James Webb mirror takes that up to 6.5 meters. The Webb dish is made up of 18 hexagon mirrors that are made from gold-plated beryllium, which is a very special rare earth metal that is six times stronger than steel while being one third the weight of aluminum. This is a large part of the reason that the sticker price for the telescope has reached something around $10 billion all in. Then there's the even more gigantic sunshade on the bottom of the space telescope. This is five layers of another crazy material called Kapton, which is a synthetic film made by DuPont that can remain stable over a wide range of temperatures from cryogenic to superheated. 
Each layer is coated with aluminum, and the two outer layers that are closest to the sun will have an additional coating of silicon. Each layer of the shield will progressively cool the sun's rays by dissipating the heat out into the vacuum of space. And that keeps the telescope itself at a perfect temperature of negative 223 Celsius or negative 370 Fahrenheit. The entire unit was assembled in one of the largest clean rooms on Earth at the Goddard Space Flight Center. The engineers then had to fold the massive array down to its ultra compact size for travel and eventual launch inside the fairing of an Ariane 5 rocket. The telescope then had to be transported nearly 6,000 kilometers across land and sea in a specialized shipping container to its launch pad in French Guiana. NASA even had to keep the details of the Webb's ocean crossing a guarded secret because they were afraid that it might get hijacked by pirates in the Caribbean Sea. They took that risk so that the rocket with the James Webb inside could launch as close to the Earth's equator as possible for the extra momentum. This telescope has a very long trip to make and it will be moving fast. It will only take the Webb about a day and a half to pass by the moon on its way to the L2 Lagrange point. 1.5 kilometers or a million miles away from the Earth. This is a gravitational point between the Earth and the Sun where the telescope can hold its position easily and will always remain in the same orientation relative to the Earth, Moon, and Sun. So once that heat shield is pointed in the right direction, it's good to go. On day three of its mission, the satellite starts to mechanically unfold itself. This is the most terrifying part of the whole situation. There are 300 single points of failure items across 7,000 parts and 178 release mechanisms. That means if any one of those operations goes wrong, then the whole thing is useless. And unlike the Hubble telescope, this one is too far away to go up and fix. It's going to take 29 days for the unfolding process to be complete, and it's hard to imagine any of the people responsible for building this will be able to sleep at night for that entire month. And then, even with the entire unit deployed and the camera switched on, it will take months of work to perfectly align the 18 hexagon mirrors into one calibrated dish. The precision for each mirror is aligned down to one ten thousandth the thickness of a human hair. So, assuming that everything works out and the whole thing isn't ruined, what does the James Webb Telescope do? The unique aspect of this telescope is that it will see mostly in the infrared spectrum of light. That's very different from the way that the current Hubble Telescope can see. The Hubble skews towards the ultraviolet spectrum of light and also covers the same visible range as the human eye. So the web is not a replacement for the Hubble, it's a complementary instrument. The infrared sensitivity of the James Webb is what makes it so complicated. That's why it has to be kept cold behind that massive sun shield. Any interference from the sun or even the earth and the moon will throw off the instruments. But the infrared vision is essential to our mission to look backwards in time and into the hearts of developing planets, stars, and galaxies. The only way to see the most ancient light in the galaxy is on the infrared spectrum. So the crazy thing about light is that it never disappears or ceases to exist. It just keeps radiating out to infinity. And that includes all of the light that was created at the moment of the Big Bang if that's even what actually happened. We might prove ourselves wrong once we start looking at this stuff, which is also pretty crazy. But as the universe expands and the space between objects stretches out, that light shifts further and further to the infrared spectrum. On the grand scale of the universe, our galaxy is relatively old. We're pretty sure that the known universe is 13.8 billion years old and the Milky Way is 13.5 billion. We're close enough to the beginning of everything that the James Webb should be able to see almost all of the way there. It's estimated that the telescope can see light from 13.7 billion years ago. The other advantage to infrared vision is that it can see through clouds of cosmic dust and gas, and it's usually in the middle of these clouds that all of the good stuff happens. 
pretty much every object in the universe starts off as a big spinning disk of rocks and dust and gas that all starts to pull together in the center to form a planetary system or even a solar system. We've never really been able to see what's going on in the middle before. We can start to get an idea of how matter organizes itself on large scales. Another amazing use case for the James Webb is going to be looking at exoplanets. We've already been able to do this a little bit with a method called transit spectroscopy. Basically, we focus on a particular star and wait for a planet to pass in front of it. By measuring the changes in wavelengths as the light from the star passes through the planet's atmosphere, we can actually get a pretty good idea of what elements exist in that atmosphere. So far, we've only really been able to do this with big planets that are very close to their stars, but the new Webb telescope will be able to get more detailed readings from smaller planets at greater distances, opening up orders of magnitude more possibilities to detect alien life. That could be as subtle as finding a planet that has oxygen and methane present to indicate that something could be alive there. Or we could even find more definitive signs of a civilization on an exoplanet. For example, we know that there are certain gases that are only produced by industry and not by nature. If we can find those somewhere else in the universe, then we can say almost for certain that there is other developed life out there. We might even be able to detect artificial light on an exoplanet as another sure sign of advanced civilizations. We're coming for you aliens, you can't hide much longer. As trippy as all of that time traveling and alien hunting is, there are also going to be a lot of good uses for the James Webb closer to home, even within our own solar system. There are so many near-Earth asteroids floating around that could have really interesting things on them, but we can't send probes to every one of them. There are so many interesting comets and other things that pass us by that we can finally view in high definition. Remember that Oumuamua object came flying into our solar system from God knows where and we were all freaking out wondering if it was a weird asteroid or a space iceberg or an alien spaceship. The web is going to be extremely helpful for getting a better look at weird transitory objects like that as they pass us by. And not only that, we are going to point this telescope at the old familiar planets in our solar system and in conjunction with data collected by satellites and Mars rovers, we're going to have a significantly better picture of what's going on in our own solar system. The only bummer here is that we do have a very limited time to get all of this done. Like we said earlier, the James Webb is so far away from the Earth that it can't really be serviced, at least not with the resources that we have available right now. The SpaceX Starship can change this, and we're obviously very hopeful that it will, but right now, NASA is estimating at least a five-year lifespan from the James Webb. It can go as much as 10 years, but that's the limit of the fuel supply that it has on board for thruster control. Once they lose those thrusters, it's game over. The whole thing becomes useless. Obviously, the infrared data from the beginning of the universe is going to be really cool and all of that, but I am by far the most stoked for the aliens. I need to know if there are civilized aliens out there in the universe. That's my biggest hope from all of this. But let us know in the comments section what results you're the most excited to see from the James Webb Telescope. And hopefully, we'll get back here in about a year from now to talk about the first results from their observation it's going to be nuts and we can't wait. Please don't forget to leave an offering to the algorithm gods and give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. We've got two more videos up there on the screen that you'd probably enjoy as well. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already for more space content and ring the little bell so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching the video today and we will see you next time.